right, for this next video, I'm gonna show you how to build up an illustration literally from the ground up, layer by layer by layer. So I've got a layer panel here, just stretch it out a little bit right there. And I'm gonna to go to File and Open. On my desktop, I'll scroll down and find my folder here. And let's go to my week 10 files, chapter three. And folder number six, the Illustrator Sailboat. So I'm going to open up this one. Draw the sailboat scene. All right, so I've already set up a template. You can see it right down there. And I've already numbered all my layers. So I'll just pull this to the right so we could read the names of those layers. Number one is the sky, and then the sun, and then the sailboat black pole. The two white sails. So I always name and number my layers if I can. If I don't want to number them, at least name them so you can keep track of your file organization. And you'll notice I start with what's furthest away, the sky behind all this scene. Okay, so what I'm going to do, when I start on a brand new layer, I hit D for default colors. That's going to set up a white fill and a black stroke. I'm going to click on the white fill because I'm not going to draw a white sky. And I'm going to hit the question mark key on my keyboard. That's going to get rid of the fill. So technically, I'm going to draw an empty box. I'm going to take my rectangle tool and I'm not going to start right on the edge of the scan. Okay, I'm going to start outside. In fact, I'll go way up here. I'm going to click and drag a rectangle that's bigger than what I need, down into the waves like that, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure this little bounding box is turned off. So I go to view menu and I say hide bounding box. A bounding box is a transformation tool and I'm not gonna transform that rectangle anyway. I'm done drawing it. So I turn off the bounding box. Okay, what I need is to fill this rectangle with this sky gradient. So I'm gonna click this uh, double arrowhead to expand my panels. And right here, I've got my swatches panel. Okay, in the bottom left corner, there is a button called a swatch libraries menu. So when I click that, these are all the extra sets of colors that come with Adobe Illustrator, including more gradients. And it's getting cut off on my screen here, but I'm gonna go to gradients and sky. Okay, we'll pull that back into my video here. Sky gradients. So I'm gonna click once outside with my black arrow, deselect this rectangle, and I'm gonna click on sky 24. That's the last gradient in the list. As soon as you click that, it gets added to your swatches panel. So I don't need this anymore. I can close the sky gradients. Now I take my black arrow, click right on the edge of the box. You can't click inside. You got to be right on the edge. I'm on my fill color and on my swatches, I'm going to click that sky 24 gradient. Okay, but by default, the gradient is going to go left to right. I want mine to go up and down. So right here on my toolbox is my gradient tool. And when I click that, I'm going to get this bar called the gradient widget. In order to change the direction of my gradient, I can start at the top. And if I want to drag straight down, I hold my shift key. And I pull the bar straight down like that. So now I have a gradient starting dark at the top and getting lighter and lighter and lighter as it comes down. I'll take my black arrow. Now I don't need the black stroke around this box. So I click on the black stroke on my toolbox and I hit the question mark key for no stroke. There we go. I've got a simple sky. And obviously, the reason why you want to do layers is because I can't see the rest of my scan. So I'm going to turn off the eyeball for the sky. 
and I'm going to come up to the sun. Now, I'm not going to do this on my video, but for yours, every time you finish a layer, save your progress. You don't want to get to number seven and then Illustrator crashes on you. Okay, so every time you finish a layer, you turn the eyeball off and save your progress. I'm going to come up to the second one here. And I'm going to go ahead and save this right now. So I'll go to Save As. I'll click on my desktop and I'm going to type in let's see, last name, first name, sailboat. I'll save it and I will save it as an Illustrator file. Okay, every time a layer is done, save your progress. Now, when I come up to the sun, since I'm starting on another brand new layer, it is D for default colors. Even though I know I'm not going to draw a white sun, I'm going to click on the white and hit the question mark key on my keyboard for no fill. And I'm going to obviously zoom in. Click a couple of times right here. Okay, so you'll notice the sun is made up of two objects, a larger star and a slightly smaller circle. So when you have objects that are obviously being stacked on top of each other, you want to start with the largest shape first. So I'm going to start with the star. Okay, right below my type tool are my geometric tools. And if I press and hold down, I have a star tool. Okay, stars are going to start from their center. So I'm going to put the cursor right near where I think the center of this star would be. And I'm just going to click and drag. And I've got a five pointed star. Okay, I want a lot more points than just five. So while I hold down my mouse, I can resize the star. I can rotate the star. But while I'm holding down my mouse, I can hit the up arrow key on my keyboard and add more points. Now keep in mind, I'm not sure how many points were on this star. So just do something that quote unquote looks good. I don't care if it matches exactly. This is your drawing. Dang, now I made it match exactly. Okay, well, let's go with that. Okay, you know what? Just to prove my point, I'm going to not match it exactly because that was too good. All right, so here's a star. You can obviously see it doesn't match my scan, and that is fine. A scan is just a general idea of where you want to put pieces of artwork. They don't have to match exactly, so don't get all frustrated and freaked out about that. Okay, I purposely did not match my scan. You're fine. Okay, now I go to my star tool, press and hold, and I'm going to go back to the ellipse for the circle around the two. Okay, again, if I guess where the center would have been, I'm going to hold shift key for a circle and option key. And what the option key does is lets me draw from the center of that circle. So while I'm holding shift and option, I'm going to pull a circle out like that. I let go of the mouse first. Then I can let go of my keyboard. And if it didn't land where exactly I wanted it to land, I go to my black arrow and I can move that. You can see right there. And I'll just move it back on top right there. Okay, so once you have drawn your shapes as black outline shapes, now you go in and apply colors. So on my color panel right here, I'm on the fill. For the circle, I'm going to fill that like a darker yellow right here. Like that. Then I'm going to click and drag right across the edge of this star. And I'll fill that with a lighter yellow up above. Okay, so with every layer, once you are done drawing and filling in your shapes, you select them both, click on the black stroke, and you hit the question mark key because you don't need black outlines on them at the end. So there's my sun. I'm going to zoom out. 
I'll turn on my sky layer and now we have a sun floating up in the sky. Okay, again, that's another layer done. So I'm gonna turn off the eyeballs, Command S to save my progress and I'll come up to layer three. The sailboat black pole right here. So I'm gonna zoom back in on that a little bit. I can always hold my space bar and move the page if I need to. Again, since I'm starting on a brand new layer, I'm gonna hit D for default colors. I know I'm not drawing a white pole, so I'm gonna click on the white fill and hit the question mark key. I'm just gonna start drawing everything with black outlines first. Here's my circle tool, my ellipse. If I go near the center, actually I'm gonna start down here. I wanna show you another drawing trick. So if I hold shift key and I drag a circle about the size that I need, I also hold my space bar and now I can move my mouse and reposition this circle right up there. Okay, if the circle was the wrong size, I only let go of my space bar. I'm still holding my mouse. I'm still holding my shift key. And you could see how I could resize that circle. But that one looks good right there. So I'm gonna let go of my mouse first. Then I can let go of the shift key. And now I come back to the ellipse. Press and hold, go to my rectangle. And the main idea in Illustrator is you have to overlap your shapes. I would never start the rectangle right at the bottom of this circle. Okay, I'm gonna start inside the circle. And I'm gonna click and drag down, all the way down, over the edge of the red boat, like that. Okay, I wanna overlap my shapes. Make sure you do not stop on the edge of the red boat. You overlap the edge. Okay, you'll see the why in a minute. I'm gonna select these both. Click on my fill. On my swatches, I have black. If it's a black object, it doesn't need a black stroke as well. So I click on the stroke and hit the question mark key. There is another layer that's done. I can turn off the eyeball, hit Command S to save my progress, and come up to number four, the two white sails. Every time I'm gonna repeat the same thing. I'm on a brand new layer, so D for default colors. And even though these are going to be white sails, I don't wanna start with a white fill. I always start with no color. You draw your shapes as black outlines and then you fill them with color last. So I'm gonna click on the white, hit the question mark key, and then I'm gonna start by, let's zoom out once, and get some drawing room here. I'm gonna take my pen tool and I am gonna start right up here on the right sail. Click once at the top, now I hold shift key and I click once at the bottom shift key for a perfect vertical line I hold shift key over here and click for a perfect horizontal line and then I let go of the keyboard and come back to the start you'll see in the bottom right corner of your pen tool you might be able to see it on this screen too there's a little circle next to the pen tool and that's called the loop so I have looped all the way around back to the start. The loop means I've gone back to the beginning. And I click. Hold my command key for my arrow, command click outside, and one sail is done. Now I'm gonna come over to the bottom left corner of the left sail, click once and let go. I'm gonna hold shift, and click once right here for a perfect horizontal edge. Come straight up and hold shift and click once for a perfect vertical edge. And this is a nice long curve. So if I'm starting from a corner, I'm gonna hold my option key. Click and drag one direction line that goes down. 
about halfway down the curve right here. I'll click and drag another point coming down. And when I get to the end, there's that little loop. I am ending on a corner, so I am also going to hold the Option key to end at a corner, and I'm gonna click and drag down to bend the second half of that curve. Every time I'm done, I go to my black arrow. These outlines look pretty good. If they don't, you can always edit your curves with your white arrow by clicking on the edge and manipulating the anchor points and moving those around or pulling the bar right here and bending your curves. So you can always fix a bad curve with your white arrow. But these look good, so I'm gonna take my black arrow select them both by just dragging across them. I'm going to hit D for default colors. That refills those two sails with white, but I don't want black outlines at the end. So I click on the black stroke, hit the question mark key, and now I have two flat white sails with a mast and a sun in the sky and a sky. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off these eyeballs, those are good. Come up to layer five and I'll hit Command S. I'm gonna move this image up by holding my space bar, and push it up, and now I need the red sailboat, number five. So again, if I'm on a brand new layer, D for default colors. I know I'm not gonna draw a white sailboat, so I'll click on the white and hit the question mark key and then I'm gonna take my pen tool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start right here on the upper left corner. Click once and let go. To come straight across, I'm gonna hold shift key and click for a perfect horizontal edge. If I'm starting from a corner, I'm gonna hold my option key and the curve goes down, so I'll drag down. Now again, you want to overlap your shape, so I would never start right on the edge of the water. I'm going to come into the water, click and drag down and to the left. That'll bend that curve. I'm going to come across the water here, click, and come back up to the start, click. I overlap the boat by overlapping the water. Now that my shape is done, I take my black arrow, select it, click on the fill, and I will fill it red on my swatches panel. I don't need a black outline when I'm done, so I click on the black stroke and hit the question mark key. There's my solid red sailboat with my two sails and my mast and my sun and my sky. Now that I'm done with all of those, Command S to save my progress, and I'll come up to number six. Now, number six is the long wave, so I have to zoom out. So I'll take my magnifying tool, option click a couple of times so I can see the whole page here. And let me zoom in once so I can see it a little better right there. Okay, and again, brand new layer. D for default colors. I know I'm not gonna draw white water, so I'm gonna click on the white and hit the question mark key. And then I'm gonna draw a bunch of curves with the pen tool. Now keep in mind, like I did with the sky, you do not start on the edge of your scan. You're gonna start outside. Okay, so I'm gonna draw these curves again and again like this. The curve comes down, so I'll click and drag down. Short line, because I'm drawing a relatively short curve. Now at the end of the curve, it goes up to the right. So I click and drag up to the right. Option key to start from a corner. It comes down to the right again. Do not hold the option key at the end, and it goes up to the right. Option key to start from a corner. It comes down to the right. No option key at the end and it goes up to the right. Option key for a corner, and it goes down to the right. The end of this wave will go right behind the whale's back right here, 
up to the right. Notice how I'm overlapping. I'm drawing right through the whale. You'll be fine. Option key and it comes down to the right. No option key and it comes up to the right. I draw right through the whale. Option key and it comes down to the right. I go outside the edge. No option key at the end and it comes up to the right. And your goal in Illustrator is to draw and find your way back to the start. So I'm going to click right here and click right here and click right here. Hold my space bar and we'll push the image over. Click and find my way back to the start. Okay, when I'm done with a shape, I select it with my black arrow. Click on the fill, and I'm going to fill that with a light blue on my color panel. Just click and drag right down there. As with every other shape, when I'm done, I don't need a black outline, so I click on the black stroke and hit the question mark key. Notice how the light blue wave is above the red boat. So when I turn that on, the boat is going under the blue wave. You could see the boat went way down here, but I don't see that part because I overlap that part. So here's all my layers. Got a nice sailboat floating in the water there. Okay, those layers are done, so I'll turn those off. Command S to save my progress. And now number seven is the gray whale. So again, brand new layer, D for default colors. I'm not going to draw a white whale, so I'm going to click on the white and hit the question mark key. And then I'm going to zoom in. I would always recommend you zoom in to do your details. Now, like I mentioned before, when we drew the sun, this object is made of multiple pieces. So you always want to start with the biggest piece first, and that is the entire body of this whale. So I'm going to take my pen tool. I'm going to start in the water because I want to overlap my shapes. I'm going to click and drag right here up and to the left. Short line like that because I'm making a short curve. And then I'm going to go right where the wave hits the forehead or cheek of this whale. Click and drag up. Almost straight up like that. Then I can add a big gap between my points and come right to the top of the head. Click and drag to the right. And as I drag further, it's bending that curve. Now I'm going to come down right here, right underneath the edge of that wave right there. Click and drag down. Okay, and this is a long curve right here. So after this point, when I've dragged down, I'm going to go right here. Because you can see this edge doesn't really bend much. It starts to bend right about here. So I'm going to put a point right here. Click and drag down. Short line, because I'm doing a short curve. And right here, it goes up to the right. So I'm going to press and hold and drag up to the right. Okay, the next section starts from a corner. So it's option key to start, and the curve goes up to the left. Short line, because that's a short distance. No option key at the end, and it goes up and to the right. The next curve starts from a corner, so it's option key to start from a corner. It goes down to the right. No option key at the end, and it comes back up to the right. The next curve starts from a corner, so it's option key to start from a corner. The curve goes down to the left. Short line, because I've got a short distance. No option key at the end, and it goes down to the left. I've got another corner here. Option key to start from a corner. The curve goes down into the wave. No option key to continue my curve. Down into the wave. And back, just by clicking, back to the start. I overlap my shapes. 
Now for the spots, I can just switch right underneath my type tool to my ellipse tool. And if I have a small little oval, I'm gonna only hold my option key to start that from the center. If you have a perfect circle, I hold option and shift. Option key lets me start from the center, shift makes a circle. Option and shift, option and shift, option and shift. And I'll zoom in a little closer for this eye right here, okay? Again, you have two objects stacked on top of each other, a larger oval and a smaller circle. So again, just like the sun, you start with the largest shape first. I'm going to hold just my option key and draw an oval from the center there. Now, if I want a perfect circle for the white highlight, I hold option and shift for a perfect circle from the center. And for the smile, I'm just going to switch to my pen tool. Okay, I'm going to do three anchor points. One at the beginning that goes down. Short line, because I'm about to draw a short curve. One halfway through the curve. And one up here at the end of that curve. With my black arrow, I can select the end of that line, which looks a little too thin. And right up here is my stroke panel. I'm going to hit the up arrow right over here and make it two points. Just so the whale looks a little happier. Okay, now I can click on the white highlight and start doing all my colors. Click on the fill. Fill it white. Click on the stroke and hit the question mark key. I just want a solid white circle. Click on the oval for the eye. And it's a black outline right now, but right above that outline, you see a bent arrow. So I'm going to switch this from a black outline, click the bent arrow, to a black fill. There we go. Now I'm going to select, hold shift key and select, shift and select, shift and select, shift and select. I'm going to click the curved arrow again. But I don't want these to be black, so I'm going to click on the black fill. Right over here on my swatches panel, I'll make those like a darker gray right there. Click and drag and hit the edge of the body. And I'll click on a lighter gray. I don't need a black outline anymore, so I click on the black stroke and hit the question mark key option click with my zoom tool and there's the whale so let's see how that whale sits in the ocean got a light blue wave and then all my other layers okay i can see the bottom edge of the whale because there's going to be another wave that covers that edge because i'm overlapping my shapes so again i can click and drag and zip through these eyeballs turn them off I'm on layer eight, the middle wave. So again, command S to save my progress. D for default colors. I'm starting another brand new layer. I'm not gonna draw white water again. So I click on the white and hit my question mark key. And I'm gonna do the same thing like I did on the previous wave. Start outside the image. Click and drag down because the wave goes down, up at the end because it goes up. Option key to start from a corner, the wave goes down to the right. No option key at the end, and it goes up to the right. Option key for a corner to start, it goes down to the right. No option key at the end, and it goes up to the right. Option key for a corner and it goes down, no option key at the end of a curve, and it goes back up. Option key for a corner, and it starts to go down to the right, no option key at the end, and it goes up to the right. Notice how the steps are the same over and over and over again. 
That's why I'm having you draw three waves. So you're going to really get the practice with this. Option key to start from a corner. It goes down to the right. Remember, you're going to end outside your image. Now the curve goes up to the right. And then I have to find my way back to the start. So I'm just going to click, 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 hold my space bar and move this image over. Click, click, back to the start. Doesn't matter what you're doing down below the page because you're not going to see that at the end. Notice I'm making a big mess. It's fine. Okay, I'm on my black arrow. I select the shape now that I'm done drawing it. Go to my fill color and we'll fill it a medium blue right there from my swatches. I do not need a black stroke at the end, so I click on the black stroke and hit my question mark key. And notice how that blue wave is now overlapping the whale right there. So now I literally have a whale tucked between two waves. So it goes in front of this one, but behind this one. You overlap your shapes. Okay, this guy's looking pretty good. So let's turn off these layers. I'll hit Command S one more time. And now I come up to number nine, the bottom dark blue wave. I'm on a brand new layer, D for default colors. Click on my white fill and I'll hit the question mark key. I'm not drawing white water. I'm going to go with my pen tool again and I'm going to start outside the image. Okay, these are slightly longer curves, so I'm going to have to draw, click and drag slightly longer lines. So click and drag down because the curve goes down. Over here at the end, click and drag up to bring the curve back up. Option key to start from a corner. The curve goes down to the right. No option key at the end, and it comes back up to the right. Option key for a corner. It comes down to the right. No option key at the end, and I'm ending outside my image. It goes up and up and up to the right. And just like the others, I have to click, click, click. Hold my space bar to move it, click, click, and find my way back to the start. Every time I'm done with the shape, I go to my black arrow, select the edge so I have the entire wave selected. I'll click on my fill. We'll fill that dark blue right there. I do not need a black stroke when I'm done, so I'll click on the black outline and hit the question mark key. And now I'm gonna zoom out one more time and check out the entire scene here. So let's just zip through all my layers right there. Okay, and that looks pretty good. The only problem is I've got a huge mess around the outer edges. You can see I drew right off the edge of the page. So here's how you're gonna clean up your artwork. You're gonna turn off your layers again and go to the very top. Okay, the general rule is you have to do what's called a clipping mask on the topmost layer. That's why I'm ending at the top with the final clipping mask. Okay, brand new layer, D for default colors. This time I'm going to keep the white so you can see what you're drawing here. So I'm going to go right underneath my type tool, come back to the rectangle, and now I'm going to trace right around the edges of my image. So right here in this upper left corner, I'll click and drag down to the lower right corner of my scan. And there is my clipping mask. It's a big white box. Okay, what a clipping mask is, is a container. So if I turn on all my other layers here, what this white box is going to contain is the artwork that sits right below it. Everything outside the boundaries of this box is going to disappear because they're not being contained within the borders of this white rectangle. Okay, so make sure all your layers are unlocked. 
You do not need your scan anymore. So I'll throw that scan in the little trash can here. All my layers are unlocked. And I hit Command A for select all. Okay, you can see the outlines of all the other objects, the whale, the sun, the boat, they're underneath this white rectangle. And all I have to do is object menu, come all the way down to a clipping mask and the white rectangle will be made into a clipping mask. So I click that and everything gets trapped inside that container. Okay, the only thing you got to watch out for is you only do a clipping mask at the very, very end of your artwork. Because notice what it did. It sucked up the artwork all the way to the top layer. So now this and this and this layers one through nine don't have any artwork on them anymore. They all got collected up to the top. So now this is like a big photograph of my drawing. The problem is you can't move things around. If you take your black arrow and try to move the whale, it would just move the whole thing like a big photograph. So I'll undo that. Okay, so clipping masks, that's why you do them at the end when you know you are done. I'm gonna save this one more time. Illustrator files are small, so I could just keep these empty layers. They're not gonna do anything to my file anyway. And that is how you structure the layers of an illustrator drawing. I look forward to seeing your results. See you in the next video.